Hi there, guys. Welcome Hello. back to Anderton's TV. Uh, I'm Brad. I'm Meg. And uh, we're back for Hello, Is It Mike? You're looking for? We I are. Guess. We are. And we're... we are looking at recording tube mics. You practiced that quite a lot before yeah. the video, didn't you? Because I didn't were... have a clue what they were. <laughs> <laughs> so some people have actually asked for tube mics to be demoed, and it's yeah. something that I think we don't do enough. Um, yeah, I. You were completely flabbergasted. You don't know what they uh, are, and I said, "Why does each one come with its own little smoke machine?" That one, to be fair, <laughs> does look like a smoke machine. Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, I'm very interested to learn. I know a lot of you at home will be like, "Oh dear." <laughs> oh yeah. god, is oh, another tech no, lesson no, no. with uh, no, Brad no, no, the Meg. opposite. Oh, I think people would think that. How do I not know? But I'm oh. sorry, I don't. But I don't think many vocalists do. Do you not? No, and certainly, well, most musicians in general don't know. Um, because although some guitarists might know about tube technology because of amps, yeah, it's not really something that everyone will know about. It's not a common instrument or a common tool for a studio. So Thanks for making me feel better. That's, yeah, absolutely fine. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> Some of you might be asking why tube microphones, what's the whole point? Mm. Uh, much like a, a guitar amp that's tube based, you get a warmer sound. It's, it's more of a full bodied uh, sound because as some of you might know and some of you might have heard from our other tests, um, condenser microphones can sound a bit sterile because mm -hmm. of how quick the response is on them. So a tube mic is designed to just give more warmth, right. really. Um, amongst other things. But these three that we've brought out today are also multi-pattern condensers. Okay, uh, well, meaning? Multi-pattern tubes, I like. Uh, meaning they are multi-patterned. Oh, now, right. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously the way the sound is uh, picked up by the microphone and by the diaphragm uh, is changeable. So if you were doing okay. vocals, you might use cardioid. Yeah. If you were doing, oh, that's so satisfying. If you were doing uh, guitar or overhead, you might use figure of eight. Or if you're doing something like a choir, you might go all the way around to Omni. I see. Uh, now they all have that. Yeah. Both the warm audio and the SE, they're quite satisfying, but mm. I've got to say, Rode need to pick up the pace. That is not a satisfying knob. <laughs> but one good thing about it is it's actually uh it works on gradients so and you might be thinking what does that matter so you can really blend between sort of figure of eight and omni so you can actually change the pattern whereas mm. on these they're set increments. to that setting yeah yeah which again isn't a problem but and just quickly yeah before we get into the nitty-gritty what price range are we looking at here Oh God! Now you're you're testing me. So it's actually quite a uh, a broad spectrum today because I think we're at the four fifty, four sixty price mark. Then it goes up to around six hundred, and then uh, up to I think it's about eight hundred. So mm -hmm. it's quite a, a cross section, but there's not a lot of tube mics out there. So mm. Certainly, in the manufacturers we deal with, they all do one or two. Right. And um, this is. This is like the main selection of what we have. There, obviously, we've got Sontronics as well, but the, the price bracket was such a, a step up that I didn't think it was fair to really put a K2 up against yeah, a Sontronics. These ones. So, you know, this is this is all a bit closer. Um, it just hopefully will shed some light on what to go for. Now, I've used two of these microphones. Um, I haven't used the warm audio, so that should be quite interesting. But what we'll do is we'll go through and we'll just talk about um, what we're actually using today. So, we've got the uh, Rode K2. Australian manufacturer, some of you may know, um, multi-pattern tube. They're all they're all like that, so it's not mm. a problem. One of my absolute favourite microphones is the SEZ5600, something that I've used countless times on. I've used it on string overheads, choir, um, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, vocals. So yeah, everything. Just pretty much anything yeah. I've, I've used it on. I've loved the response on it, so that's great. Uh, and then the WA47 which is much like all the warm audio stuff is a sort of clone a redesign of a vintage microphone so it'll be interesting to hear how they differ mm. and what they all sound like but before we get into that did you have any other questions meg um because you looked so perplexed earlier on when we were looking at these yeah are these oh, i really don't want to come across stupid <laughs> 
we use this instead of a interface. No, is that so right? it's, a, it's a very valid point actually. Um, use both because what you'll notice on some of these, they have multi-pin XLR, so it's not a standard three-pin XLR. Right. It's all multi-pattern, multi-pattern, multi-pin even, mm. and um, that's because not only does it control the polarity of the, the the pickup pattern, it's also the power supply for the tube. So has to provide that so you would then take the XLR output into a tube uh, sorry into an audio interface but what's worth noting is um, if you're using an audio interface that has phantom power mm -hmm. it's advisable to turn it off it's not going to damage it but you can actually end up getting this background noise or hiss or, or electrical right. sound because you've already got power going to the diaphragm and to the tube so so you literally don't need that phantom you don't need power. the phantom power on so that's cool. So we're going to give you a run through on what they actually sound cool. like. But before, do you want to see inside a microphone? Yeah. Because this is another reason why I love the uh, Z5600, because you can actually open it up. Open it up. I am interested because I, when we got these out of the box, I said, oh my God, they're massive. Like, they're so much bigger than a, an average recording mic. Yeah. And are these so? Obviously, with, with working and things like that, I'm aware that valve amps yep. that you use for guitars and things like that are very delicate, and often you don't, you know, you can break the valves and things like there that. Is. is it the same with these? Do you have to yeah. be very, very careful? You have to be with careful. These? And again, uh, I think valves in general, people don't really understand that a valve is kind of like a light bulb and it's working. So there's a filament inside that heats up. Mm. Uh, when it heats up, it obviously expands, but the glass can become quite brittle. If you move this, without it cooling down or sort of throw it in the case or anything like that, you are going to break the, the, the tube. And that's mm -hmm. the same for um, valve amps. You know, we, we get a lot of people coming to the shop and go, oh, this amp stopped working. And unfortunately, valves can go at any time, like a week into them being used or 10 years. If you don't let them cool down before moving them, then yeah, they will be, uh, mm -hmm. well, I'm not saying they will be definitely, but they are more prone to problems. But look yeah. at that. That's all cool. hand engineered at the SE factory, oh, you can, don't drop it. <laughs> and this, even this, this is the level of nerdiness. That's a solid brass rod that's been bored through and makes the, the casing for the, uh, the Z5600. Very nice. I've opened a few of these before. Oh, wow. <laughs> <Pretty hell. laughs> it's getting them back together that's the problem. So what we're gonna do is, do you know what you're gonna sing for us today, Meg? Do you know what, I'm gonna take it old, well, <laughs> old school. Old school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go early noughties. Said, it's I'm not gonna, really old school, is do it? Some um, Scissor Sisters. I don't know. Again, kind of like you know, the sun shining. I want to yeah. do songs that like you know, summer, summer vibes. Summer vibes. I can't believe you people. call the early noughties old I school. Know. How old are you? Twenty-three. Yeah, but for me, these are the, these are the songs I was growing up with. You know. You, you were listening to a lot of uh, Scissor Sisters oh, growing I was up. I love the Scissor Sisters. Wow. There we go. I know. So <laughs> she's going to sing some Scissor Sisters. I'm going to reassemble this. I've just realised something that I forgot to mention on this, which does make this mic slightly different to the others, if I remember rightly. This has a high pass filter and a pad. So uh, you can, so, so for vocals and for like multi instruments, it's got that, whereas the other ones don't appear to have them. So it's that gives it the edge up, in my opinion. But we'll give it a blast and yeah. see how it sounds. Cool. Be right back. I'm gonna take your mama out all night. Yeah, we'll show her what it's all about. We'll get her jacked up on some cheap champagne. We'll let the good times all roll out. Cause if the music ain't good, well, it's just too bad. We're gonna sing along no matter what. Cause the dancers don't mind if the New Orleans, if you tip them and they make a cut. I'm gonna take your mama out all night, yeah, and show her what it's all about. We'll get her jacked up on some cheap champagne, we'll let the good times all roll out. Cause if the music ain't good, well it's just too bad, we're gonna sing along no matter what. Cause the dancers don't mind if the New Orleans, if you tip them and they make a cut. I'm gonna take your mama out all night, yeah, and show her what it's all about. We'll get her jacked up on some cheap champagne, we'll let the good times all roll out. Cause if the music ain't good, well it's just too bad, we're gonna sing along no matter what. Cause the dancers don't mind if the New Orleans, if you tip them and they make a cut. Okay, so that was a bit of an insight as to what they sounded like, but... 
Which ones did we think stood out? I... I know my favourite. I've got a favourite, which I told you before, mm -hmm. but ha I have actually used this one before and I just find it sounds so clinical for a tube mic. It, there's no life to it. No. It, it could have just been an ordinary condenser for, for all it's worth. Um, still massively one of my favourites, but that had a bit more beef to it, I didn't agree. it? I yeah. agree. That's the thing. I, I liked this and I, you know, you'd set my expectations high because mm. you're saying it's good. It was, it was very, very good. But this one, yeah, I don't know. For me, maybe just it, it's even just again like depending on whose voice and things yeah. like that. And oh, who you record it. It's all subjective. I love this. But I think that's the thing I'd say. It, it, it's almost a case that that wasn't better. It was different. Yeah. Um, so because they, they're still very both of them really warm sounding. Mm. Um, with the that that what we described as beef. Um, <laughs> probably could also be more described as like a more vintage tone. Yeah. Uh, which is what you'd expect from warm audio. But um, which makes me, I think, to sort of summarise, I'd say the SE is slightly more contemporary sounding, mm -hmm. which would probably make it more versatile as a multi-instrumental mic. Well, and that's also why I think if I, if I actually came down to it and I had to mm. purchase one, I think I would go for that one. Really? As, yeah, as well, because of, you know, the different settings we can have. Yeah. And, and again, as you say, this is great because I I like the way that this makes me sound. That, yeah. That's my sound as an artist. I'm like, oh, that is familiar for me and yeah, I yeah. therefore I like that one. But yeah, I think what you're saying, this is great for anything. Yeah, now I'm not saying that that's just limited to vocals, the warm audio, because that, that beefier sound would be great on guitar, mm -hmm. on um, maybe even percussion, but like acoustic and electric guitar, definitely. Yeah. I, I reckon on a piano, it'd sound really nice. Yeah. Like really, like a big grand. Fleshy. Just... <laughs> Fleshy beef. <laughs> Fleshy beef. Oh God. Describing sound is a weird, weird it's thing, so isn't it? It's so hot. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's, um, it is troublesome. But I think, I'm going to say it's between these two. Yeah. Not to say that that isn't... No. I just think, Yeah. for me and my money, I wouldn't personally go for that, which is a shame because I've had Rode microphones in the past. The NT5s, for example, are a favourite of mine. The NT1 and the NT1A are great. Mm. Um, but that's always been my favourite because I actually had the Gemini 3, which was the, the one above this. I had the limited edition one that was like... 333 Ooh. of them worldwide. No, no, no. It came in this massive silver flight case. It was really cool. Nice. But I just never used it enough because I kept going back to that because I knew the sound that I could get from that and yeah. I knew it was it was versatile. Yeah. And to be honest, the Gemini 3 actually sounded a bit more like that. Oh, really? Yeah, so, you know, that was a really expensive mic in comparison to, to the price point of that. Mm. But, yeah. Definitely. I, it's... It's made me want to do more microphones that aren't just standard condensers. I really want to do a, a, a ribbon mic. Okay. Out. So maybe if the Watch people... Watch this space. If you subscribe and, you know, all that jazz. And you're kind to us in the comments. Yeah. Um, so I've had to move my lapel because people keep complaining about my beard and uh, it ruffling against the... Uh, the, the microphone so hopefully that's been resolved now um, but yeah leave a comment and um, <laughs> Ooh, such bitterness oh god they probably can't grow beards or something you know, I'm you. Oh, anyway so yeah I want to do one on ribbon mics yeah we've got loads more condenser mics that we need to do and um, I might have to usurp you at some point as well because we might be doing some male vocals unless you can get your voice really low do you know what we need now? What's that? Is that like me that, hello, sadness, my old friend? Like, oh, the uh, Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. yeah. You're Maybe just Chris, me off. Chris could do that in post production. <laughs> and I think it's, hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, what did I say? Hello, so sadness. sadness. Oh, no. <laughs> hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. <laughs> so on that wonderful, <laughs> wonderful note, thank you very much for watching. I've been Brad. I've been Meg. The professional. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye. <laughs> 
Hey guys, thanks for watching the Andertons YouTube Music Technology Channel. If you're a guitar player, or you play bass, or a drummer, or you're into keyboards, you might like one of our other YouTube channels, and I'll put links to those in the description below. Anyway, if you'd like to find out more about the products we featured in this video, please click up here. If you'd like to watch another video from this channel, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like the one I'm wearing, click down here. And lastly, if you'd like to subscribe to our Music Tech YouTube channel, please click down here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.